Hiya guys and welcome back to Wayne's Workshop. Um, I think during these abnormal times I need to say a few words. Um, I'm going to continue uploading videos not only to not only to provide those of you uh, with some form of entertainment or hopefully entertainment but also to keep myself occupied um, whilst on lockdown myself. I will say wherever and whenever you're watching this video I do hope that you're all safe and healthy. Um, we're all in this together guys. Stay safe and be kind to each other. Okay, um, right. Bit of mail come in. Um, good old Matt's, uh, great guy, has sent me a replacement milling cutter for the one I had from Bangrod. He got it in himself, had a good look at it. In fact, box of spare tips as well. And a new 50mm milling cutter for Tuth. And this one looks fabulous. He said he's had a look at it himself and it works fine. So... A 50 mil milling cutter. I haven't got round to uh, to rip, you know buying another one or what have you. But yeah, a new milling cutter and armor. Matt, you're a legend. Thank you so much. Um, I certainly didn't expect that, but thank you so much. Okay. So moving on. Um, Lee at Dalton Engineering. Um, Lee has an engineering company, I believe, in Northern Ireland. And he does all sorts of different things, turning, milling, line, boring, welding, um, agricultural engineering, fabrication, all sorts. He has got a YouTube channel, it's Dalton Engineering. And yeah, he does post up videos of, of the work he's doing rather than as a, a sort of YouTuber. Uh, much the same as most of us, just showing their everyday, everyday goings on. But in his case, it's the sort of everyday goings on in his business. Now, he hasn't um, got any stickers that he could send me but he has got a business card here i'll bring that up to camera oh where am i there we are so that's dalton engineering and yeah he's got some really nice machinery shapers all sorts in the workshop there and he does post up videos so check him out guys and of course if you're in northern ireland and you need any engineering work done he's your man i think the phone number and the email address is on the card as well that i just showed to camera so anyway he sent me um Basically, I think a few items that he was unlikely to need. Um, so there is basically a wiggler in the box, a uh, edge finder. So yeah, please with that, that's excellent. Um, he must have been watching because he sent me a couple of spot drills. I think it's an eight mil and a 10 mil spot drill there. So excellent. Um, there's an MT3 dead center here. Uh, yeah, it needs a bit of a clean-up, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's going to be useful, I'm sure. And also, I'm actually stunned with this, a dial indicator. I'll bring it up to camera. Yeah, a little lever-type dial indicator. I have got one of these, but uh, mine is a little bit wonky. But this one looks absolutely perfect. So, Lee, thank you so much. And I think I will be sticking the business card up on the sticker board. So there we are, Lee, thank you very much. So of course, not knowing those spot drills were coming, <laughs> I actually ordered myself a set of spot drills. A um, little set of cobalt spot drills, you know, a great big handful of them here, uh, from three to 12 mil spot drills. I don't know, I mean, these are, these are obviously the round metric sizes, three to 12. I think it's three, four, five, six, eight, 10 and 12. Do they do like, for instance, say I wanted um, to use a spot drill through a thin plate, something like that, um, for an M8, and I wanted a 6.8 spot drill. Um, I'm not sure if I can get them. I've looked, and they always seem to be the sort of round sizes or the very most half mil sizes. I mean, obviously, the 5 mil would do for M6, you know, so on and so forth. But I don't know if they do, you know, m multiple different sizes of spot drills. I, I haven't looked that hard, I suppose. But if somebody knows a good place to get them from, give us a shout uh, in the comments below. Okay, um, I've got a few other things I'm expecting. Um, I know there's a few other people are sending me some odd bits and bobs in the next week or so. Um, I quite often get uh, emailed by people asking for my address, people that want to contribute to the channel. Um, in these times where you've got people, delivery drivers, people having to go to the post office, all that sort of thing, um, please don't ask much as I appreciate being sent things, I mean, it's absolutely fabulous. But I'd rather 
um, as take pressure off our delivery drivers and social contact. So if, if you want to send me anything or anything like that, let's hold off until all this is over or certainly on the wane before we uh, start you know, sending stuff around. I try and keep to a minimum what I'm ordering. I haven't ordered anything. Well, I've got one thing due to come, um, but I haven't ordered anything to come into the shop. And yeah, I mean, you know, you've got delivery drivers picking things up. People are moving are all around the country delivering stuff. Um, the more we can keep the unnecessary stuff down on that, the better. So yeah, um, obviously, you know, if, if you want to contact me, whatever you can by email, um, and then we'll leave anything that's sort of moving around until after all this is finished. OK, and hopefully it's not too long for us all. Right. So um, what have I been doing? Right. Well, behind the scenes, um, the last two, three videos that I put up are back a good few weeks ago. Um, although the last video I put up was only a few days before you'll see this one. Um, but I happened a while back. So in the background, I've been busy doing a little project. I basically had to dig about and saw what metal I've got lying about in the workshop without having to order any more in. I thought, what can I make with that? You know, it's not a case of I want to make one of these. It was a case of let's have a look what materials you've got and think what I can make. So I've basically been doing that and I've made myself a mini palette, um, a bit of a universal mini palette. I'm calling it a mini, mini palette because that seems to be the known name for it. I call it a tooling plate um, or, you know, this is a mini tooling plate um, that you can use for various setups on the mill, whether that be in the vice or on the table and what have you. But for the purposes of uh, most people will understand what I mean, I'm making a mini mini palette with all the clamps and associated bits and bobs that go with it. So these next, uh, well, I'll show you the opener in this one and then these next two or three videos, I'll try and pop, pop them up fairly regular in the next couple of weeks. Um, but obviously at this point where I'm demonstrating all this, I've already filmed it all and it's all done. So anyway, enjoy guys. Thanks for watching. And again, stay safe. Okay, um, right. Bit of mail come in. Um, good old Matt, uh, great guy, has sent me a placement milling cutter for the one I had from Bangrod. He got it in himself, had a good look at it. In fact, box of spare tips as well. And a new 50mm milling cutter for Tuth, and this one looks fabulous. He said he's had a look at it himself and it works fine. So, a 50mm milling cutter. I haven't got round to, uh, to rip, you know, buying another one or what have you. But yeah, a new milling cutter and armour. Matt, you're a legend. Thank you so much. Um, I certainly didn't expect that, but thank you so much. Okay. So, moving on. Um, Lee at Dalton Engineering. Um, Lee has an engineering company, I believe, in Northern Ireland. And he does all sorts of different things, turning, milling, line, boring, welding, um, agricultural engineering, fabrication, all sorts. He has got a YouTube channel. It's Dalton Engineering. And, yeah, he does post up videos of, of the work he's doing rather than as a, a sort of YouTuber, uh, much the same as most of us, just showing their everyday, everyday goings on. But in his case, it's the sort of everyday goings on in his business. Now, he hasn't um, got any stickers that he could send me, but he has got a business card here. I'll bring that up to camera. Oh, where am I? There we are. So that's Dalton Engineering. And yeah, he's got some really nice machinery, shapers, all sorts in the workshop there. And he does post up videos. So check him out, guys. And of course, if you're in Northern Ireland and you need any engineering work done, he's your man. I think the phone number and the email address is on the card as well that I just showed the camera. So anyway, he sent me, um, basically, I think a few items that he was unlikely to need. Um, so there is basically a wiggler in the box, an uh, edge finder. So yeah, please with that, that's excellent. Um, he must have been watching because he sent me a couple of spot drills. I think it's an 8mm and a 10mm spot drill there. So, excellent. Um, there's an MT3 dead centre here. Uh, yeah, it needs a bit of a clean-up, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's going to be useful, I'm sure. And also, I'm actually stunned with this, a dial indicator. I'll bring it up to camera. Yeah, a little lever-type dial indicator. I have got one of these, but uh, mine is a little bit wonky. But this one looks absolutely perfect. So, Lee, thank you so much. And I think I will be sticking the business card up on the sticker board. 
So there we are, Lee, thank you very much. So of course, not knowing those spot drills were coming, <laughs> I actually ordered myself a set of spot drills. Um, little set of cobalt spot drills, you know, great big handful of them here, uh, from three to 12 mil spot drills. I don't know, I mean, these are, these are obviously the round metric sizes, three to 12. I think it's three, four, five, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Do they do, like for instance, say I wanted um, to use a spot drill through a thin plate, something like that, um, for an M8, and I wanted a six point eight spot drill. Um, I'm not sure if I can get them. I've looked, and they always seem to be the sort of round sizes or the very most half mil sizes. I mean, obviously the five mil would do for M6, you know, so on and so forth. But I don't know if they do, you know, m multiple different sizes of spot drills. I, I haven't looked that hard, I suppose. But if somebody knows a good place to get them from, give us a shout uh, in the comments below. Okay, um, I've got a few other things I'm expecting. Um, I know there's a few other people are sending me some odd bits and bobs in the next week or so. Um, I quite often get uh, emailed by people asking for my address, people that want to contribute to the channel. Um, in these times where you've got people, delivery drivers, people having to go to the post office, all that sort of thing, um, please don't ask. Much as I appreciate being sent things, I mean, it's absolutely fabulous, but I'd rather um, as take pressure off our delivery drivers and social contact so if, if you want to send me anything or anything like that let's hold off until all this is over or certainly on the wane before we uh, start you know sending stuff around i try and keep to a minimum what i'm ordering i haven't ordered anything oh, well i've got one thing due to come um but i haven't ordered anything to come into the shop and yeah i mean you know you've got delivery drivers picking things up people are moving are all around the country delivering stuff um, the more we can keep the unnecessary stuff down on that the better so yeah um, obviously you know if, if you want to contact me whatever you can by email um, and then we'll leave anything that's sort of moving around until after all this is finished okay and hopefully it's not too long for us all Right, so, um, what have I been doing? Right, well, behind the scenes, um, the last two, three videos that I put up are back a good few weeks ago, um, although the last video I put up was only a few days before you'll see this one, um, but that happened a while back. So in the background, I've been busy doing a little project. I basically had to dig about and saw what metal I've got lying about in the workshop without having to order any more in. I thought, what can I make with that? You know, it's not a case of I want to make one of these. It was a case of let's have a look what materials you've got and think what I can make. So I've basically been doing that. And I've made myself a mini palette, um, a bit of a universal mini palette. I'm calling it a mini, mini palette because that seems to be the known name for it. I call it a tooling plate um, or, you know, this is a mini tooling plate. Um, that you can use for various setups on the mill, whether that be in the vice or on the table and what have you. But for the purposes of uh, most people will understand what I mean, I'm making a mini mini palette with all the clamps and associated bits and bobs that go with it. So these next, uh, well, I'll show you the opener in this one and then these next two or three videos, I'll try and pop, pop them up fairly regular in the next couple of weeks. Um, but obviously at this point where I'm demonstrating all this, I've already filmed it all and it's all done. So anyway, enjoy guys, thanks for watching, and again, stay safe. So in these times when I can't leave the house and what have you, um, I have been kept busy, I am actually working from home. Um, I can't do my main sort of engineering job because I can't leave the house, but I can um, film videos, and I'm, I'm not, this is nothing to do with work obviously, but I am filming videos um, corporate videos, filming and editing videos uh, for the company I work for, out of the box, that sort of stuff um, on you know various bits of garden machinery as it happens at the moment. But that's that's another story. But I'm kept being kept busy during the day. Um, the milling machine being new, I haven't got great amounts of sort of flat square stock. I've got bare bits of round bar and what have you because I've had a lathe for quite some time. So you, I always order double what I need when I order a piece of bar or what have you, and you've always got some left over. But uh, flat square stock, I'm sort of rooting through toolboxes, pulling out bits of uh, bits of steel and bits of uh, abandoned sort of projects, well not projects, but uh, tooling, you know, you always have scraps and I've been chucking them in boxes for years and I've been digging them all out to see what I've got. So my thought is, um, having found a couple of bits of steel and sort of looked at this pile of bits and bobs, what can I make out of that uh, to keep myself busy and keep the milling project going? 
So I've got a couple of ideas. So this is going to be an ongoing one. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to make well, what I call a tooling plate. Um, a lot of people call it a mini pallet. Um, that sort of idea. I think A-Bomb's got a great big one about 18 inches square, that idea. Um, and it's cast iron and it was all done on the shaper and what have you. Um, but obviously much smaller scale for the mill here. I'm going to make a little mini pallet with um, probably 6 mil diameter reamed holes, M6 uh, tapped holes, that sort of idea, all the little clamps and kits to go with it. Um, I did have one slightly larger than this many moons ago I used to use on a bridge port. Um, it was one of those jobs where you made up bits when you were on nights and the things were quiet. Um, and I basically gave it away to one of the apprentices when I left that company thinking I'm not going to need this again. Uh, wish I didn't, but hey-ho, um, I'm sure he's still using it to this day. But I'm going to make one out of this plate. Now, I'm going to advance it slightly from the previous one I had. Um, typical idea is that the mini pallet, if you would imagine that's the flat plate on the top, obviously it, it's a one, this. Um, it's not a sacrificial one, this is a tooling plate, not a, a sacrificial mini pallet. Um, where that's going to be bolted onto what will be the underside, which again is a piece of O1. Um, and if you can imagine, it would sit in your vice, something like that. This has even been welded on this piece of steel, or there's a bit of spatter on there where something was welded. Um, but my other thought is, I'm going to actually make it so that this tenon will sit in the keyway slot, um, so that I can also use it directly on the table. Um, yeah, there may come times when I want to use it on the table for jigging something up, what have you. Um, you know, repetitive jobs typically tends to be why you, when you use these, uh, or fiddly little compound angled jobs. But yes, um, I'm going to make it so that not only will it go in the vice, but it will also sit on the table. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine this bar up first of all. Now it's half inch. Um, I've got 12 mil cutters. Um, and the T-slot in the table is 12 mil. So yeah, I could machine it down to 12 mil. Um, machine a 12 mil slot with a 12 mil cutter, but it's always a little bit big, perhaps. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rough machine this, or machine it nicely, but I'm just going to take a scratch pass off both sides. Maybe it'll come to like 12.4, something like that. Then I'm going to swap over to this plate. I'm going to find a way of clamping this plate. I will clean all the rust off before I even think about machining it. Don't want to get all this rust all over the table. Um, you can tell how long it's been lying around by the amount of rust and silver steel doesn't rust quickly. But anyway, yeah, I bet I've had that plate. I remember what it was for and I bet it was 20, 20 years ago and it sat in the bottom drawer of a toolbox for donkey's years. <laughs> right, so yeah, I'm going to machine this up to clean up. Then I'm going to machine a slot along this uh, plate. I could probably sit it on parallels on the bed to clean it up, you know, dress it up. I'm going to machine a slot through it and get it so I've got a nice snug fit on that bar in the slot in the centre, squared up to the edges. Then I'll probably drill and bolt from the bottom to bolt this up into the plate in the top, looking to avoid holes uh, that are going to be in the plate. It's going to be probably the width of the vice, this tenon. Then, while it's in the same position, I'm going to machine a slight undercut either side of the slot and that will allow me then to take this key out and just dress both sides with a fly cutter independently of each other but all on the same setup so I've got the slot and the undersides all in one plane and a little undercut in the corner that will then allow me to put this back on flip it over sit it in the vise and then do a great big fly cutting job on the top so that's my method and that's where I'm going with it um, I've already machined top and bottom of this. Um, I just took any lumps and bumps off the side. This, this was the ground finish. Um, this was sawn one edge and it was ground on the other, but I've machined both sides. Uh, again, this has been lying about for 20 years. So yeah, I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to set it up in the vise, skim across the one side, just a light skim, same the other side. And whatever width it comes out of is the width of the slot that's going in the plate. So, this video's been all talking so far, let's get some milling done. So we've just taken the first pass, a little bit of cutting compound spread around on the top, using one of my new brushes, thank you Matt. What am I running at? Yeah, 870. I'm running about a 40mm diameter on the fly cutter. 
and this is a tooth though pass just to uh, polish her up. Again, this is going to be machined afterwards. It's just going to be, well, what is it going to be? 12.5 mil, something like that. few little rust marks still in it. I'm probably going to put another thou on. That should do me. Speed things up again. Running around a thousand RPM. one side done I'll flip it over and do exactly the same on the other side so I've just set the plate up squared it up to the table and I've marked the center line um, this plate is actually 100 mil wide so I've just scribed the line 50 mil in it's not fussy at this stage um, but I've just got my sticky pin just stop it through there we go that's running through sticky pin um, oh let me show you that I'm sure I've showed it before on the lathe um, it's a uh, drawing pin basically out of a wall board a uh, big chunk of blue tack or similar tack um, stuck on the end of the milling cutter you threw the pin up and you basically got a pointer so I'll just wind it down so that it's almost touching and then let me just come into shot line the end of the pin up on the line that's nice and basically I now lock the table there and I know my cutters centrally about this way so that done save swapping over between wobble uh, sticky pins and what uh, wobble pins and cutters and what have you um, wobble pins fine if you're using a chuck um, but you know when you got it in the collar so yeah it's a wallboard pin um, you put it roughly central stick it up on the end of the cutter and uh, Hit it through with the end of a spanner, get it running through, and then you can pick up the centre point. So that's the sticky pin. Um, so now my cut the central this way. I'll bring the head down, touch off, and I decided I'm going to go two and a half mil deep with a slot all the way through. Now this is a 12 mil cutter, so it'll be 12 mil nominal, um, and I'm going to walk it side to side and get it so that the key fits the slot. Took a 0.5 cut from touch off to start with. This is another 0.5. What am I running at? 1000 RPM. Everything's cutting nicely. So 
I'm going to take it down to my depth at probably about 2.6 mil. I want it to end up about 2.5, but I think there's a good 0.1 on the plate to come off to flatten the plate out, as it took about 0.1 to clean up um, from my original tap shop. So yeah, 0.5 of the time. I'll bring you back when we're to death. So final cut now, 2.6 mil deep. The previous one was 2 by 5 and this is the 2.6 we'll just take it nice and slow with this one I got a bit of cutting compound in the uh, slot Once we've got it to depth, the next job's going to be getting it to width. So we're going to have an approximate measurement of how wide the slot is now. And then step forwards and backwards by half of the difference, or just under, once I've mic'd up what the tenon is at present. So say the tenon's 12.5 and this slot is 12.1, I'll probably slot over like 0.15 aside leave myself at something like 12.4 uh, then I'll start getting uh, fiddly with it you know scratch passes off both sides to get the slot width smack on nice sort of firm snug fit on the tenant so I've just measured them both up 12.09 12.41 so there's about 0.3 to come out uh, just over um, uh, 12.49, 12.1, so it's about 0.3. So I'm going to take 0.1. I've already done the backlash and set a zero. Each one of these is 0 0.05, so that would be 0.1 or 4,000, you know, in old money. Um, towards me with a table. Let me just move the camera. There we are. So I'm now going to take a trim of 0.1 off this back face. So yeah, I've left the depth where it was. So this should get me to 12.3. Uh, All by the shouting. I think I'm going to take another 0 0.05 actually off this face. That'll get me within 4,000. I'll take the rest off the front face. Just trying to keep the slot roughly central for the time being. If I loosen off my clamps. Oh come another 0 0.05 there tighten up again and I'll do this with a climb mill back across If I did the same step the other side, I'd be within a flower to have finished. Um, so I'll take all the rest of the material off the other face. Um, and the worst thing going to be out is, you know, a couple of flower central. But bearing in mind, I only set it up with a sticky pin and a scribe line in the first place. 
that's going to be more than good enough. But the outside of the plate will be machined um, equal about to the tenon at a later stage. But that's just me doing something I don't normally do and thinking ahead. Because <laughs> normally I make it up as I go along. Which is pretty much what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm just going to take the backlash out, reset to zero on the dial, I've done that, loosen the locks, and I'm going to take point 0.1 this side, so I've now moved the part into the cutter, this way, so it should be taking off this face. Um, am I right? No, I'm not going to be touching anything. <laughs> I didn't move that I gotta move 0.15 that brings me back to where I started set a zero then take 0.1 right okay lock it up you see talking to camera not thinking so I'm basically now I point one the other way I forgot I had to move 0.25 I'm climbing along here. aiming for sort of size to size okay so 0 0.05 now there same step over both ways from centre should leave me about 0.1 millimetres or about undersize on the slot I say should I'm hoping it does <laughs> hello next door's dog having a bark his name's Scooby he's quite an old gent now for another measure so I took a few more cuts and you can probably hear in the background the scourge of all youtubers the dreaded lawnmower but yeah the weather's nice uh, there's a couple of kids two doors that play football banging the ball against the wall as well so if you hear that it's just kids having fun right okay um, I've got it fitting and come on it does it does go in and there's absolutely no movement so I'm happy with that um, yeah more luck than anything else I just took a progression of small cuts let me bring you down to my hand wheel so yeah the three lines 0.15 was uh, the same as the other side and I've had to take another three cuts at 0 0.05 and it's basically got me to where I am now so we're happy um, move on to the next step I'm just trimming one end of the tenon to square it up. Luckily I didn't take the vice down, so I've left everything set up. And I want to cut the tenon to length. We'll have a decide in a minute on how long it's going to be. I think it's going to be roughly the width of the vice. I think that would be more than enough. This was just rough sawn, um, and I'm squaring it up just to give me a known edge. 
to mark a line to be able to chop it off to the length we uh, decide on. Okay. And we've cleaned up all the way across, but not top to bottom quite. Maybe another point one will probably do it. Locking the x-axis with every pass and unlocking to move it, obviously. No, not quite. There's a, there's a groove in there at the bottom. Uh, doing this I've just decided on the length I'm going to make it the width of the vice I think the vice is 75 mil so 75 mil it's going to be but I'll just idiot proof myself right another two throw on there I'll climb mill mil this as a finishing cut so back this way, a little bit slower. Yeah, I'll just measure the width of the vice with a rule just to make sure it is 75 and not three inches. Um, yeah, I think it is 75 mil. So of course I chopped it off. And thought I'd better measure the vice beforehand, and uh, well, guess what? That vice that I said with confidence was 75 mil. Yeah, it's three inches. <laughs> 76.2, and I've just locked the wrong axis. Talking again. No surprises, I'm always talking. There, then. So yeah, I'm going to clean this up and finish it to three inches. I just marked a line at three inch on the end of a rule with a sharpie, um, black line there, so I know I can pretty much remove all of the black line or 90% of it and I'll still be just over we haven't cleaned up yet one to clean up and then we'll have a measure see what I need to take off in fact I think I'll set a zero there call this the last cut then have a measure that's just cleaned up okay so I'm going to measure it up now and basically cut it to three inch long so just taking a couple more cuts. I've got a nice uh, Starrett 2 to 3 here. So I'm expecting it to be just over 3 inch. Let me just... Oops. Of course this is one of the better quality Starrett mics. Um, the ones that are made in Scotland instead of the USA. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's going to wind up all the Americans, I'm sure. I'm only kidding, folks. Right, okay. Um, yeah, I'm 12 thou over. 3 inch and 12 thou. So, yeah, 0.3 millimeters. Or just a tad over. So, yeah, I'll take that off on the hand wheels now and see where we end up. I'll probably take a point two and a point one finishing cut. So point one, point two. That's point three. Okay. See where we are. I mean, it's not critical, this. I don't know why I've got the mic out, really. I probably could have done it with the calipers, but, uh, well, at least it give me the opportunity to have a chuckle. Oh, come on. Well, about a thou and a half over. I'll take that with a climb pass, I think. guessing about that much. <laughs> Just under a thou. All right, let's do it. I got metric dials. Um, I've got to sort of think on my feet. What's a thou in metric? About point zero two. This, yeah, just under half a line. Oh, my dials. My dials being 0 0.05 per line. I suppose I'm quite lucky that I sort of spent the beginning of my career in Imperial and the latter stages in metric. Well, in fact, the greater part in metric, but it started off in Imperial. There we are, bang on size. So, that's to length. Now we've got to think about some bolt holes to bolt it down. I'm going to bolt it up from underneath with some Allen bolts. Um, M4, M5, yeah, M5, yeah, probably M5, maybe an M6. We'll go M6, we'll have a look, we'll have a think on that one. But I want the pitch of the two bolt holes to be in between the pitch of the holes that are going to be in the plate. And I'm thinking central hole in the plate and 15 mils, all 15, 15 mil squares. So I don't want it to be a multiple of 15 mil out from the middle. I want it to be interspaced between those. I'll explain it better in a second. 